Well, good morning, everybody. Um, yeah, for once a weekend, re entire re weekend recap again. Um, my computer really had a hard, tough weekend. Uh, I was still running calculations. They completely blocked the computer. Uh, in addition, our internet was kind of sucky this weekend at this point. So I don't know how and where uh, it's, uh, to do that. So I got to the two videos for my AC Milan shirts because I thought, well, better get them out before they lose to Juventus. More of it later. Uh, and then, yeah. Um, I did, I recorded a really nice top 10 video, but it is very long and for that reason it just didn't want to upload it. I want to try this now at work, where the internet connection is so much better and I hope you will enjoy that one. I had a lot of fun preparing this one um, and I hope it will show and you will appreciate it as well. Um, so that will come tonight. I'm very excited about that. Okay, so much for uh, me talking uh, prior. <laughs> now, the housekeeping. Now let's get to the weekend. Actually, before the weekend, I kind of told my wife, you know, if I look at the schedule, there are only really three games that I really want to watch. Which means, you know, if I want to watch more, please let me watch more. But for those three, please keep me uh, keep me free. That was Saturday evening, uh, the Libertadores final part one, and Sunday Manchester United versus Manchester City, of course the other way around, and Milan Juve. Of course, although I have to say Milan Juve was for me, I was not that super excited about it because you know Juve is just so far ahead and Milan was not playing that well, they had a win, we had a slight winning streak, but they were not playing that well, so you know, my excitement for that game was kind of more like trepidation of how bad we did be. So yeah, um, come Saturday, I, my older daughter had a visitor, so that means the kids are playing upstairs, and uh, me and my wife said, well, mostly this will be a sort of a uh, nice uh, afternoon because we don't need to be constantly present for them, which it proved to be more or less. And uh, um, she asked me if uh, she wanted to watch a movie, and I said, Yeah, I'm fine with that. Um, but um, can I write the final post, the one for Wales that I really wanted to do? And yeah, and she proceeded watching on her phone she prefers it that way um, and so I said do you mind if I put a game on uh, <laughs> of course so I put a game on I didn't watch it really but of course the game that I won that's you know there was not too many that I really was uh, immediately interested in but Parma to, Torino against Parma uh, yeah you know my default is always Serie A and so it was again default Serie A I think there was only uh, some Brighton and Cardiff, which I actually uh, watched the highlights. I honestly don't remember the results right now. I remember it was blue against green, which is a kind of a weird color matchup. Brighton away kids, kind of weird. Um, so, Torino against Parma, where Parma actually got a 2 0 lead. And can I say it that the Parma jerseys, the away jerseys, are glorious? I totally love them. The yellow, uh, they look like bees with the uh, um, blue hoops. I, it's glorious. Uh, my wife said they they look weird. They they look weird a, a, a little bit. They look like bees, and I said, yeah, but I like them. You mean like them, like them, or they're crazy? I said I absolutely love them. They're glorious. <laughs> she was just smiling at me, and I actually like that they. Uh, yes, it is Peretta, which is a food company, but I like Viva La Mama. It's just wonderful, honestly. Uh, great jerseys. Uh, 
I also like the first the goal by Chevinho, uh, where he just takes the ball and dribbles in and still has the ball and then just throws it into the uh, near corner. Uh, one to one, wonderful goal. Torino, um, after the Parma was 2 to I pulled one back. Um, that was the halftime score. Honestly, uh, Parma should have scored a third one. They just hit the bar on that try. Should have been more. Uh, and then it was all <laughs> done. I think Torino couldn't mount the challenge any anymore. Uh, and yeah, Parma looks actually quite good. Uh, and I'm happy about it. Uh, Parma was one of those teams in, in, in the 90s that I really liked. And I actually regret not having a Parma jersey. Um, yes, they had the big scandal and they broke up for Parma lad, blah blah blah, but uh, something of Parma that I always liked. So, yeah, uh, happy to see them perform well again. And then, yeah, there was not much. Uh, you know, I didn't watch that one too closely. The other one that I put them on, um, just because, was going on against uh, Lille. I couldn't watch the Classica because uh, that would have been the clear choice and that, and, and that would have been one of the marquee games. I probably would have put that even ahead of the Manchester Derby, uh, to be honest. So, um, for that reason, well, I was a little bummer and I was waiting for the highlights which didn't uh, come until later. So, uh, going on against Lyon. Actually, Gaga was quite nice at the beginning. They even had it 1 0 at halftime, but then Leon got ang ah, angry. Just uh, did their best to take control of the game. And uh, I think they made it 3 1 relatively quickly. I know Deepai scored a nice goal. Uh, Gaga then um, cut the lead with a penalty, and then it was 2 4, and that was that. So, yeah. That was my Saturday afternoon, where actually I saw more so so soccer than I actually uh, expected to see. And I was all set. Everything was set for uh, the game. And now, before that, I actually also, and that I saw a lot, was Athletic, Athletic Echo against Athletic Bilbao. That was a very interesting game because I, I, when, when I started, Athletic uh, Bilbao already had uh, one nil lead. Um, Atletico equalized and uh, almost immediately after um, it was two one again. Uh, and the two goals were by Yaki Williams. I remember that one. And then late, late in the game, uh, Atleti managed another equalizer and they even got the winner through Godin. Um, it was a really interesting game. Um, I also like the colors. I don't like the Atleti jersey, but uh, the red, white with the blue pants against the blue shirt with the white of Atletic Bilbao. Uh, that was a really nice to look, to look at and it actually was a big win for Atletico. Um, I think they're now even in second place thanks to that result and not far off the pace, but definitely not. So that was actually a really, really, really good game. Uh, there were actually a lot of uh, games with uh, quite some goals. But as I said, that game ended and my wife um, I, uh, took the kids up. I was set for El Super Classico. I, I even did every, I did everything, kids prepared everything that I can watch that game. Um, and then I read it's postponed. And there was really nothing else. Uh, I felt a little, a little bit deflated, so it was postponed because of torrential rainfall and the uh, stadium was underwater. <sighs> I don't know how it was, I mean, we saw this uh, week the game in Porto uh, was also really water, but you know, in South America everything is maybe not as spiffy and great as in Europe, so maybe there was a good good reason for it, but uh, imagine, imagine a Champions League final being postponed. <laughs> it doesn't happen, but yeah, what can I say? I was a little bit deflated because not only did this kill my Saturday, because I was really looking forward. I, I, 
I decided I put all my focus on on that final because I really want to see it and nah, it's not gonna happen. Oh well, then. So I watched highlights and then I, I finally got to see the highlights of the Klassiker between Dortmund and Bayern and that apparently was a great game. Uh, Dortmund off the bat had great chances to take the lead. Uh, I think it was Reus who scored it. Uh, almost, he was uh, on, on one on one with uh, Neuer more or less. Um, but didn't. And then Lewandowski, of all people, although he has been scoring against Dortmund since his transfer quite, quite a lot, um, made the goal because there was absolute. The defense of Dortmund was so unsorted. Um, they, he, 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 he was free in goal. So, yeah, was not a uh, good defending. And Bayern had the lead and. Dortmund came roaring back, uh, challenge of Neuer on Reus, I think it was Reus again, um, got a penalty in the 49th minute that of course um, he converted, was, uh, Neuer was in the corner as far as I remember and just a few minutes later Lewandowski makes it 2-1, they had a chance to make it 3-1 but uh, that would have been maybe too much because Dortmund really got uh, the pressure on Bayern. Uh, that uh, was apparent. They were, the, I think Sancho had a huge chance of um, making it 2 2. It was not meant to be, and then it was a wonderful volley uh, by Marco Reus again, uh, who actually got the, uh, even the score at 2 2. Um, wonderful goal. Probably the best goal of the entire evening. And Paco Alcacer made it 3 2 for a deserved win um, for Dortmund. Although Lewandowski would have made a third, but it was ruled out he was just that much offside, so it was the correct decision. But yeah, uh, one of the best games, if not the best game of the weekend, it has to be said. So didn't watch much. Actually, Sunday afternoon, I first I saw I saw that there was Atl Atalanta Inter, which I had some feeling that this might give some trouble for Inter. I was really hoping for it, but I didn't watch it. And when I saw I saw, I saw the result, I was jubilous, um, 4-1. And when I watched the uh, highlights, it was actually that Atalanta should have led by three or four at halftime. They only managed one meager goal. Inter was not present at all in that game. Uh, which to me is surprising because they seem to really get it together and now nothing like it. Uh, they were absolutely not in the game there. So yeah, um, it was also remarkable because Ilicic had squandered a chance where you don't know how he did not make this, how it, he did not make the goal. Uh, has to be said that way. Uh, he had a clear run onto an empty goal, uh, just stumbled a little bit over it and then just couldn't convert. Uh, it was a really odd scene and he even hit, uh, he, even, he himself hit the post, uh, which must have hurt a lot. I think in other chances he alone could have made two or three goals. Inter gets the equalizer. I think it was a penalty and it seemed like Inter is cruising and then Atalanta makes another one and adds two on in extra time and I think the best one was the one by Gomez, the fourth one. Um, and from what I heard the commentator saying in the second half, Atalanta had three shots a goal and made three goals. Inter was not really in the game anyway and in the first half they are wasting chance after chance. But that result made me happy, personally, because you know, I don't like Inter. And, you know, given that Milan was about to lose to Juve, anything that goes in their favor um, would go well. I saw also, I didn't see the highlights, but Roma beat Sampdoria. I saw maybe five minutes of that game that I can tell you. I thought it was a little bit weird that um, Roma was playing in red and Sampdoria in black. Although I like the black jerseys of Sampdoria, uh, has to be said. Uh, 
called to Roma, so Roma seemingly is finally getting a grip. The big result for me was that Sassuolo and Lazio only played 1-1. One, one. But at that point, I was kind of split. I saw the first half of Barcelona against Betis, and although Messi was in the lineup, I actually didn't really take note of him much. Uh, Betis got two goals. I was, again, I was not watching this closely because I thought I was, I, I wanted to do a few other things and uh, just had the game on. Betis had a 2 0 lead at halftime and especially the second goal. Uh, how they left Joaquin dead free in the box, Barcelona, I don't get. Um, there is some. Uh, the defense of Barcelona seems to be so vulnerable that I don't think they will win the Champions League because with such a weak defense you can have the greatest offense ever. Uh, if you leak goals like that, it's just not gonna happen. And in addition, Testing didn't have his best day. Uh, the first goal was, uh, was saveable, but you know, it was not a huge mistake. Second goal, he couldn't do much. The third goal, um, I saw it in the highlights, was a howler where he just had weak fingers seemingly made 3-0. 3-0, uh, the Barca got a penalty, Messi, um, I know it was 1-2, then it was 1-3, yeah. Uh, so Barca got the penalty 1-2, then uh, the third goal was the weak goal that basically sealed the deal. Um, Late in a game, Vidal pulled one back, but Betis got the 4-2, and Messi made it for 3, uh, or 3-4, three, better. And Barca gets an unexpected loss, and Betis uh, had a rough start to the season, but seemingly looking good. All Sevilla teams uh, are much better now. Uh, Betis? Well, let's see. I don't think they will. They could challenge for a European spot, I guess. I'm not sure if they will make it the Champions League, but what the loss for, of Barca meant for the league is that Barca is now really... Uh, they, 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 they could have put some distance between them and the comp competition because everything else did not go quite their way. It did go their way, uh, but now Atleti is sitting very close to Barca and they play next after the international break. So yeah, uh, that's gonna be interesting. Real Madrid won in the evening 4-2. I think it's A1. Uh, and they are only also the four points behind Barcelona. Um, it is very, very tight in Spain. Uh, that's all I can say for now. It seems like the big boys are showing some weakness, and that can only be good for the Spanish. But as I said, I didn't see much because the Manchester Derby was the thing that I wanted to see. That was kind of the marquee matchup. Um, because I thought that uh, Manchester United, they are getting a rolling somehow. I mean, yes, they got the lucky win in Turin and, you know, uh, had also good results against Chelsea. So maybe they can uh, get something at City. Boy, they had, they barely had stole the chance against City. Uh, after 10 minutes, and I think City had 85% of the ball in uh, Silva made it 1 0. And I honestly, they didn't, City didn't threaten much more afterwards. I think if they would have played seriously, seriously that they already could have decided the game at halftime. Uh, yes, United was standing deep, but City was super dominant. They didn't give much of the ball. I mean, whenever United launched a card, card, card rack, no one was coming to help. Uh, I think there was one scene by Rashford where there was not really much. Uh, but yeah, second half, I think there was a move where the commentator said, I think for the last minute Manchester United didn't have the ball and then it was 2-0. Uh, no, 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 that was the, the third goal, sorry. Um, Aguero right after the half made it 2-0, uh, was a thunderous shot. One time did uh, with a 1-2 with Mares and under the bar. De Gea, uh, yeah, it was his corner, but this was uh, such a thunder. 
uh, behind that, uh, that one, then I don't think you can fall too much for that one. Then United actually got a pound penalty. Uh, Lukaku, first touch, gets a penalty. It was similar to the one uh, between Royce and Neuer. I think it was okay to give that penalty. And yeah. Then the goal that I said, Gundogan. Where Manchester City, he just thought that United might be back in, in the game. Maybe they now pull it together and nothing, absolutely nothing. They didn't see the ball. City just made sure that they don't get it. And as I said, after a move where they had the ball forever, uh, they suddenly ramped it up a little bit. It reminded me a teeny bit, not not much, but a teeny bit like this wonder goal of Argentina against Serbia in the 2006 World Cup. Gundogan suddenly absolutely free in the box. You wonder how, and 3 1, not much can be said there. So, uh, with Liverpool also winning and Chelsea only get, get, getting a draw, yeah, it's now City above all, and Liverpool and Chelsea a little bit behind, but I don't think it's over quite yet. But with that performance, you know, City clearly showing we are. We are who we are. And then El Super Classico finally, 8 o'clock. Um, yeah. You ride with Milan. But it was clear that I want to watch El Super Classico. And uh, I got. When I said that, yes, the delay in the game was um, maybe not very, 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 very European. The atmosphere in the stadium was also not very European, but that's exactly what uh, you're missing these days in Europe. Uh, yes, the Manchester City, the Manchester Derby had a lot of singing and was a great atmosphere and all that, but honestly, uh, it's nothing against this El Super Classico. You barely see it, at least in the big leagues you don't see, 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 see this anymore. And La Bombonera, I know the camera angle is weird because you only see this uh, <laughs> wall stands that they have, I think we should put it on the other side. Um, but what you see from behind the goal is just amazing. Uh, jumping, uh, singing, constant chanting, taunting, whatever. And the, the stands are packed. Absolutely packed. The standing areas especially. The game itself, I thought that Boca were favorites in the, in, 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 in the game. But actually it was River who came out the more dangerous team. I think they had two great chances at the beginning and Boca just couldn't get a foot on the field. They had more of more possession but their def defense looked like it's leaking, um, could leak some goals. Uh, then Pavon, seemingly, you know, I don't follow our, 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 our Argentine soccer but the comedy said that Pavon is a big man on the left wing for uh, Boca. He pulled tomorrow his hamstring and yeah, had to be substituted. I was very sad about that. Pelotto came on and with his first touch, uh, it was not immediately after, but seemingly with his first touch, they said he's not in the game, he makes it 1 0. Uh, for... uh, no, 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 of course Avila that made the 1-0 uh, but this was the first shot, shot and goal when River already could have had two. Um, the first uh, Armani is saving and then um, doesn't get the ball up and Avila takes the rebound, hammers it in, uh, was 1-0. Right the kickoff, I think it was 20 seconds later, 1-1. Um, River finally converted a chance, and I don't know what the defense was thinking. I guess too much celebrations, whatever. Uh, it took right, you know, just when you thought the stadium was going to school, it took, deflated it completely. Um, then again, two goals within a minute or so. Two minutes, I think, if uh, play time. And then it seemed like it's headed for uh, one one after, but not Pelotto. Now it's the goal. Makes it 2 1 with really the first real action that he had on the field. Uh, there was not much happening from him. But now 2 1 right at the stroke of halftime, and the stadium was uh, beaming. And so, I mean, that was really everything you would expect when you hear Super Classico. Uh, 
and I thought, yeah, this is gonna play Boca right in, 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 in the cards. Um, then the game kind of got slow, but with a free kick by Riva and an own goal, 2-2. Then finally Tevez came on, although we hear he's not that great anymore. He had a thunder shot, which actually would have uh, ruled out because there was offside. Uh, before that, I think by Avila. And when everyone thought it will be a 2-2, suddenly Tevez stays on, on the ball. I think he was thinking about going down to get a, a free kick, but he saw that Belotto was absolutely free. So he kept on, gave the ball to Belotto and Armani made a huge save. I thought that the shot by Belotto could have been a little bit more towards one of the posts, but I guess when you're that free, you wanna just shoot. And yeah, so Armani, after not looking good on the first goal, the second goal, uh, totally saved that. Uh, the, he saved the draw. And from what I hear, there's no away goal rule in the final. Go figure. So yeah, uh, we have to see who will be the winner. Uh, it will definitely be an interesting one. That much I can already say. That also meant, since I was focused on I didn't see much of Milan Juve. Um, when I saw I think at the halftime of the El Super Classico, I went, uh, switched over, and I saw you were red, red, red in the lead, and that basically told me everything. Uh, that once you were takes the lead, although they just squatted one against Manchester, and that probably fueled my negative thoughts about that game. That you know they are not going to do this twice. So you had the lead. Looked in control for most of the time. Um, Milan just got a shot off and goal, and I think right when I um, switched the channel back to El Super Classico, Milan got a penalty, which was uh, absolutely um, clear handball that I don't know why the referee didn't see it. Fortunately, we have VAR now. Milan got the penalty, and Igo in who really wanted to show you everything that you suckers, you fought with so much, and now because of Ronaldo, you want to get rid of me. Takes the penalty, Jason gets a touch on it, goes on the post. And I think with that, every Milan fan, I saw this as on the ticker that uh, yeah, Milan just missed the penalty. And I think with that, it was pretty clear to every Milan fan how this is gonna go. Uh, they, of course, tried a lot, but in the 80th, Ronaldo made it 2 1. Celebrated like crazy, got big boos. I think that was just a time when I actually thought that Milan maybe gets a little bit from the game, but no, they didn't. Made it to nil, and then right after, Egoin completely loses it. I, you, you, you could see he was fired up for the game. He wanted to show you where, and he gets a red card. Tragic hero. Um, yeah, what can you say? I uh, totally understand that he doesn't want to have anything to do with you. Since he's on a loan contract and Milan needs the money actually, it could be interesting that Milan just could send him back because he costs a lot of money. Uh, would like, I would like to keep Iguain for a while because the one thing Iguain does, he scores goals against small opponents which Milan absolutely has a problem with. Thankfully Lazio played a 1-1, so although Lino, Milan is now in fifth spot, they're only one point behind Lazio. So yeah, it's not all lost and they play against Lazio, away from home though. And I really hope that after the inter international break they can get something going. That was that. Don't forget my top 10 in the evening. I hope you look forward to that one. Let me know which games you watched, whether you agree with any of my assessments. Give me a thumbs up if you like it. Yes, I talk a lot about a lot of different games all over the map and subscribe to my channel if you want to see more videos like these or any others you know about jerseys about jersey reviews i'm gonna try to get some league d going and of course also about um top 10s and i will talk to you soon bye